At first it was like trippy hippie. And then I put red with two Ds. One because my brother's rap name was Dirty Red at some point. And then uh, my grandma's favorite color is red. So that's why I decided to put two Ds at the end of red. Pegasus. No, it's the whole symbolism behind Pegasus. it. It's just like a What does it mean? It's not about horses. Yeah, like you know how How can you make an album about horses? You know how horses? the Pegasus was with uh Hercules and Percy Jackson and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Is that what Percy? I mean, it's just a ride a or die thing that yeah. was always there for the new. Then I do the fucking dance like Nepo. Fourteen on the game, bitch, I gave me some shooters. Yeah, my wrist shot at head on with the gleam. With the gleam. <laughs> Nigga hippie never lose, hey. hey. Never phone on snooze, hey. hey. Killing niggas sipping booze, hey. hey. Came through like, ooh, ooh. Hit that pole like, woo. Hey. I'm getting money, got my bitch diving like a dolphin. And if you talking all that shit, I send you off on auctions. Get me paid, young nigga, hey. Your bitch get me laid, young nigga, hey. I really feel like Jay, young nigga, or Nas or something. I'm getting money, yeah. You look like you're off or something. These guys is lit. They off with too much shit, bro. You feel me? Yeah, we ain't even off you nothing. Shut the fuck up. Nigga, I don't do drugs. I'm trippy red, man. Right, right. I got natural high. Right, right. Let me tell you something. We live a lit, I, I lit, smoke, lit, I smoke rich life. I smoke a little weed. I smoke a little weed, okay? I'm not gonna lie. I smoke lit, a little weed. Life. That's not a fucking drug. Lit, Mother life. nature made weed. Lit. We decided to roll it in fucking leaves and smoke it. Michael Lamar White IV, aka Trippy Red, was born on June 18th, 1999 in Canton, Ohio, which isn't really the safest place to grow up in. I come from Canton, Ohio, but I stayed in Columbus. Canton, most dangerous small city in America. Well, second. Have you ever wondered why Trippy goes so damn hard for the number 14? I mean, he talks about it all the time. Lil Fawte, yeah. It's even tatted on his forehead, so here's why. Like 14, like it goes a long way. Like I told you that's my street and where I'm from, but like at the same time, like if you look up 14 Angel or 1400 Angel, like there's really a big ass quote like this long about what the number 14 means and how much, like it's an angel, bro. It's an angel. That's all I can say. Like I go to places and I just see 14 out of nowhere. Like his dad was in jail during the time of his birth, and his mother, Tanya White, raised him as a single mom. Growing up, all his mom would listen to were artists like Ashanti, Beyonce, Tupac, and Nas, which led to him gaining interest to artists such as T-Pain, Kiss, Nirvana, Gucci, Marilyn Monroe, and Lil Wayne. Trippy described himself to be like Riley from the Boondocks as a kid, being bad as hell. But despite all that, he was actually a really good student with a 4.0 average. But what really made Trippy want to become a rapper was his brother, who was a rapper himself and went by the name of Dirty Red, aka Oomp who ended up passing away in a car crash in 2014. Trippy then started to take his music seriously by releasing his first two songs, Sub-Zero and New Ferrari, which I can't seem to find anywhere, bruh. I guess he deleted them shortly after. That boy graduated high school and then ended up moving to Atlanta where he ended up linking with another rapper, Lil Wop. They ended up meeting because of a fan who posted a comment on Instagram telling them to make music together. One of my fans commented under his shit and was like, bro, work with him, he's hard. Uh -huh. And I linked up with him. We clicked as soon as we met like the first day like it was from that point on that trippy started going in with the studio time which he actually never paid for because wap held it down for him so many people fuck with me and wanted me in their studios like i never had to pay for a studio session like and he was working alongside another artist as well cody shane he then went on to drop three mixtapes awaking my inner beast Beast mode. I stay on my cues in peace. Okay, young wild boys in a park at night. Yeah, hey, yeah. I ain't trying to make it to the top, but it's too late. And rock the world trippy. I don't need that bitch no more. Back to the city, I'm gone. Getting this money alone. Never needed anybody. Hold up, it's okay, okay. I'm getting money with my fucking gang. It's 
it's okay, okay. By the way, that Beast Mode mixtape was all produced by a young Pierre Born. Pierre, bruh, leave that park, fam. Pierre used to sneak artists in like Trippy and Young Nudie at Epic Record Studio in Atlanta. Eventually, that Q's and P's song really started gaining steam on SoundCloud, which led to Trippy signing to the label Strange Entertainment, now known as Elliot Grange Entertainment, aka 10K Projects, which 6ix9ine eventually signed to as well, but we'll get into that soon. Stupid, I'm not gonna let you get the chance. So 2016 was a dope fun year for Trippy as he was gaining hella buzz in the SoundCloud scene. In the end of that year, he would drop the song Love Scars, which actually was a part of another song, Long Way Home From Mars slash Love Scars. Trippy just ended up splitting the song into its own. Long Way Home From Mars slash Love Scars. But then I just split them apart and made Love Scars its own song. Honestly, bro, Long Way Home From Mars is fire, bro. You know I get it poppin'. 2017 was a huge year for Trippy. I don't even know where to begin, bruh. It should never, it should never come down to something like this. This should never be a problem right here. I don't even know how Cody let this happen. How y'all let that happen, bruh? Niggas always talking about, I'm your dad now, and all this other shit, bro. Saying niggas is stealing your swag, bro, like... It's on my fucking face! Trippy actually had some beef with Uzi at some point as he was accusing him of stealing his Love Scars idea with a song called Love Scars. Low key, I remember this and was like, wow, Uzi really biting Trippy. But they ended up talking it out and they cool now, but they actually still don't have a song together that's released to the public to this day. A real shame. Yeah, rolling around in my city, I feel like I'm Diddy. Yeah. Fuck 200, bitch, you know I told him, oh. Child life, whoa. Trap life. Made it out the trenches, nigga. Made it out the mall. It's high, it's high, it's high, yeah. I guess I'll start off with the mixtape that he dropped in May of that year, A Love Letter to You, with the song Love Scars really blowing up after the music video. And now at this point, Trippy was really gaining steam. You used to say you were love. I used to say she back. At this point, Trippy and 6ix9ine were actually cool with each other and ended up doing another fire song called Ooey. It's kind of weird seeing them two together, <laughs> not gonna lie. And of course I can't make a Trippy documentary without mentioning that boy X and the relationship they had. X really rocked with Trippy and saw similarities between the two. How'd you meet him in the first place? I was in the car listening to, uh, fucked up, fucked up, fucked up, and, uh, I made an insta snap and tagged him in it and he hit me back. He was like, I love your shit, bro. I, I see similarity between us. Like, you not on with these other kids on. I fuck with you. And then ever since then, we just have been talking and shit. They ended up creating one of the best songs of the SoundCloud era, Fuck Love, which actually has the most streams of any song on SoundCloud, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, while Trippy was getting hotter by the minute, he ends up dropping another tape in October of that year, A Love Letter to You 2. The mixtape reached number 34 on the Billboard Hot 200, and the tape was just another stepping stone for Trippy's career, with some of my personal favorites like Bust Down, Whoa Whoa Whoa, and Hellboy. Yo, do y'all remember this? Trippy was actually supposed to be on God's plan. That's pretty much how the whole beef with him and X started. Cause X wasn't rocking with Drake after he stole his whole look at me flow on KMT. Damn bro, imagine what this would have done for Trippy if he was on this. Who knows where things would have taken him. In December of that year, Trippy went on to drop his biggest song to date with Travis Scott, Dark Knight Dummo.
Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Where bro, he at? Bro, bro, you was supposed right. to pull up, bro. You was a whole bitch. What Let's are you talking about, Yo, bro? You was a whole bitch, bro. Bro, what are you talking about? I came there, I ran down on your homies, bro. Big 14, bro. Bro, what are you talking about? You was a whole ho, bro. What you talk, bro. I'm not going to let you talk, bro. You a whole ho, bro. What you say? What you say? Nah, bro, you a whole ho. I'm not, bro, no, bro. You a pedophile. You be touching little girls, bro. I'm not with it, bro. I got more clout than you. I got more followers than you. I got more likes than you. What is you? Damn, son. Where'd you find? this I just pulled up in a Bentley okay but for real about that 6 9 and me situation yeah, we didn't really get along back in 2018. <laughs> nah, but Trippy continued to do his thing that year and never hit the brakes. Well, I mean, he did get arrested twice, but besides that, though, he ended up dropping one of his best projects ever with Life's a Trip, with songs like Bang, Together, Taking a Walk, Oom's Revenge, and more. Forever! Yeah. She gon' let that shit bang for me, yeah. So they think I wanna die, yeah. Every day I keep it real and get that bag, ho, cause that shit up for grabs, ho. And then only three months later, bruh, he gives us his third installment to his Love Letter to You series, which I love just as much. Oh my god, I love it. Oh my god. With songs like Topanga, Love Scars 3, A Love Letter to You 3, Loyalty Before Royalty, 1400 999 Freestyle. Like, come on, bruh, this shit is gas. <laughs> Stop you in danger. I can take you to Topanga. Shorty, do not play no games with me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now why the fuck you wanna test me? God won't be blessing you. God bless me like I said. We just made a no hook. It debuted at number three on the U.S. Billboard 200 charts, selling 84,000 copies first week. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a double XL freshman. Trippy also made it on the 2018 double XL freshman list, and I would say him, JID, and Ski Mask are the only ones who maintain relevancy. He probably didn't really need this, but it's dope for sure. <laughs> talk about the album so uh so why, why'd you name it that why is it an explanation point it was really on some tribute to like x he taught me a lot like the man was amazing like he really opened his arms up to me his first album his debut album i was the only feature on that one like i went and visited him actually recently I went to miami and i was with his mom it was just so weird i broke down it was just crazy i just felt his energy like I don't know, it just inspired me. I felt like that's when I really was like, I'm gonna just name this. Exclamation. In August of 2019, Trippy dropped his second studio album, Exclamation Point. And despite it reaching number three on the charts, it had a lot of mixed reviews from fans and critics. I know most of the people I come across that talk about this album consider it to be his weakest project. And I guess that's fair because his other projects are, in my opinion, just better. So, yes, I can agree. But there are some gems on here, like Snake Skin, which is my favorite Trippy song, Mac 10, Under Enemy Arms, and Keep Your Head Up. Hey, for a suicide. Playboy Cardi was actually on this tape originally, but got taken off pretty quickly, which no one really knows why. Let's call it a dub, because like I said, they all in your comments asking, everybody want to know, so that's it, dub. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, hold up, let me pop my shit. Pussy nigga talking, we gon' leave him in a ditch. 
A Love Letter to You 4 was released in November of that year and that boy Trippy bounced back big time selling 104,000 copies first week as opposed to exclamation points 51,000 and went number one on Billboard. In 2019, Trippy was killing it with the features too, with two of my favorite being Candy and Bad Vibes Forever. My bitch tastes like candy, yeah. Play with death like I'm Billy and Mandy, yeah. Please don't run away. Please don't stray away. Trippy Red's third studio album, Pegasus, was officially released on October 30th, 2020. The entire album actually leaked two months before that, and it still managed to sell 60,000 copies first week, debuting at number two on the Billboard, with my favorite songs being We, V12, Love Scars 4, and TM666. I'm a big dog, who you wanna be? Fun fact though, TM666 was actually released on Christmas of 2017, bruh. So where are we at now with Trippy Red in 2021? <laughs> nah, but Trippy just did a feature though with the rapper Dax on the song I Don't Want Another Sorry, which he bodies by the way. And we're kind of just waiting to see if he ever drops this rock album he said he's been working on. I think it's supposed to be called Life of Nights, so we'll see. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, and he dyed his hair red again the other day too. Not that that really matters, but yeah, whole lot of red shit. But yeah, the fact that this dude is only 21 years old at the time I'm recording this is insane to me. You really can't hate on this man's success, bro. You just can't. Trippy to me is a timeless artist and really proved all those haters wrong. Whoever said he's just a SoundCloud rapper or he's just gonna come and go, nah, bro. He's here to stay and he has way more hits to come. Trippy's potential is through the roof, bro. Keep doing you, Trippy, and inspiring the youth with your dope ass music. It's lit. <laughs> Hey guys, smoke a wood, in the woods, on some wood! <laughs> I approve this message, 1400, 800.